my name is Inge, coming to you from Inge's Knitting Lab in Denmark. In today's episode, I will talk about this felted pearl hat that I designed to go along with the felted pearl mittens that you will find in episode 18. First, some practical remarks. Uh, you will find this pattern uh, for free on Ravelry. I will add in the link below. And uh, you can use the small uh, timestamps, uh, movie clips you see below uh, to move forwards and backwards in the video and move to the section uh, of your uh, step of your project, so to speak. So before we get started with the actual knitting, I will show you step by step how to do these and add in a few tips and tricks of my own uh, on the way. But before we start, I would like to tell you some of my considerations with it, this design, because uh, what makes this hat different from other hats? So uh, yeah, for one, it is a felted hat. So you may think, well, doesn't the yarn lose its elasticity uh, during the felting process? I will show you. No, not at all. Of course, it's different, different appearance. But uh, the felting process will provide you with the negative ease that you need to fit your head. Um, so no problem there. The other difference is um, uh, the kind of how it sits on your head. Because, yeah, uh, some of us may be a bit vain when wearing hats. So... We want our ears to be nice and warm. However, we also want a bit of hair to be seen and we don't want hat hair. So I was thinking, how, how can I design a hat to take these uh, things into consideration? And uh, I was thinking, well, kind of the problem is that when you design a hat, uh, the crown of the hat is kind of like sitting in the center of your head like this and then the hat will kind of rest on your uh, glasses and squeeze your hair uh, down like this so i was thinking how, how can i solve this problem and yes why not use short rows they come in handy in many places in designs so i use short rows and i use them to um, make i will show you on this other hat here so i make the hat slightly shorter in the back than in the front and in this way when you look at the head it will tilt the hat slightly backwards so the the center of the hat is not on top of your head but but backwards and this will give you i will try to wear it actually neither this one or this one is designed to make room for the hair clip so when i wear this it may tend to move out a, a bit, especially also because this is a size bigger than my actually head size, but for explanatory purposes, it it's doing fine. So yeah, this is uh, my size of hat without a hair clip. So uh, you see, they go below my earlobes, however, still providing room to show the hair and let me show you the back. It goes down to give you uh, the warmth of the neck and you will see it is slightly uh, tilted backwards. So this is how I solved my uh, <laughs> head puzzle, uh, so to speak. So yes, let me just um, take off the hat and, and put in the hair clip again and uh, let's uh, move on to the uh, the final consideration of mine when doing the hat. So I would like a fitted hat. Uh, you can of course do what I call a top hat. So it's higher. Um, and how, how do you make the difference? Yeah, it's about the decreases of the crown and how many wedges to do and, and where to do the decreases, the frequency in the row, so to speak. And I wanted this uh, rounded look, so I went for uh, doing uh, six uh, wedges instead of this one, which has four. 
can see it's it's longer let's start looking at the pattern page two at which you will find what i call the fact sheet all the basic information you need to know before you start your project so in this bar section you will see information of the sizing the yarn the gauge and uh, the yardage the yarn consumption for your project and uh, over here you will first of all see how to do the measurement of your head to to, to find your size of hat and down here you will see the measurements of the knitted hat before and after felting. This small section here is a figure showing where to put the stitch markers when we do the short rows of the hat, but we will get back to this. So I designed the hat using Fritz's garn uh, from Sandmas, the Norwegian brand, and also this drops Nepal being also uh, with alpaca so it's uh, very soft and nice uh, for the hat i think so the only difference uh, when you use these two uh, different brands is actually uh, the row gauge i would say it's slightly different uh, but yeah almost the same for me so so the gauge i'll look in the pattern is 16 stitches and 22 rows so to get gauge uh, for me i use a, a needle size five which is a us8 uh, for this yarn and a needle size five and a half millimeters or us9 to get gauge with drops nepal and uh, for both yarns you won't need more than two bullets gains uh, for the largest size of the project and for the small size, it's almost enough with only one bullet gain. However, I used only a couple of grams more of this. That was too bad. But if you make both the head and the mittens, then uh, you can optimize your yarn consumption, I would say. Yes. So, yes, let's now find the size of your head. So we will do two measurements. Find the measurement tape and a post-it note or some piece of paper and a pen. It will get helpful along the way in the pattern uh, to write it down. So the first measurement will decide the circumference of the hat and the second one, the height of the hat. So we will measure the circumference of our head. And uh, it is important that you don't measure it round like this, but you go down to the hair uh, neckline the lower one here, just above your ears, and round here, and take the note here. Mine is uh, 56, so I will put that down on the paper. The second measurement is the length of your crown, and we will now take the measurement tape and place it just uh, below the tip here of, of the earlobe in the one side, and the earlobe in the other side, and just on top of your head like this and mine is 42 uh, centimeters um, so i will put that down on paper so when looking at at the pattern now i can see that i will fit a size small uh, medium hat if you have another measurement than in the pattern no problem just go for the hat with the correct circumference and you will find in the tips and tricks section how to either make your hat uh, longer or shorter to fit exactly your head because it is a fitted hat as uh, we covered in the intro. So now we are done with the measurements. So let's get started with the knitting. I am set and prepared and I have put forward all the tools I need. So I need the, the needles, size uh, five millimeter US eight with a wire with a total circumference of 60 centimeters, which is around 32.6 inches. I need scissors, stitch markers, a crochet hook, to pick up lost stitches and do the bind off uh, later, the measurement tape and 
a darning needle to weave in ends. So yeah, let's get started with the cast on. I use a simple long tail cast on, uh, but two things are important to have in mind when casting on. One thing is not to do it too tight because uh, this will define the edge of the hat and you don't want it tighter than the actual gauge of the hat. And the other thing is a nice closure of the hat, even though uh, this uh, closure will be in the back of the head. So I cast on the number of stitches I need plus one stitch, but I will show you how. I have now cast on 90 stitches uh, plus the one stitch. So now I will show you what I'm doing to create this uh, neat uh, closure of the ring. So I will take uh, the plus one stitch from the right hand side needle and put it on the left hand side needle, just like this. Then I take uh, the first stitch on the left hand needle and pull it over this plus one stitch like this. And now I will just knit a couple of stitches so that you can see what a nice and neat um, closure of the ring this is so that you can actually not see where I connected the ring. And this is very nice when you need something to be very visible in the front. However, now this will be in the back of the head, but you can't be too uh, yeah, neat, can you? So this this was this was a trick. So before we start knitting now, we will add in the stitch markers to start the short rows. Let's have a look at the figure, or let's call it the small table at the pattern, and at uh, an actual hat, so you can see how I do it and how it is visible for me. So you can see here, uh, this line here marks center back, CB center back in the hat. This is here. And then I count the number of stitches to the right side and to the left side. So when looking at this uh, table here, I meet uh, stitch marker number three for my size after 11 stitches, then I place a marker, then three more stitches, yet another marker and three more stitches, a marker. So you can see it on this hat. So I have 11, a marker, three, a marker, three, a marker. So now I know where to do the turns. So in total, uh, three turns and giving me six rows. I have now placed all the stitch markers, including the one to mark the end of row here, center back. I usually do two, two stitch markers here, you can see. So uh, I don't know where you can see it the best. Um, and then I have 11, 3, 3 here and here. So now the pattern tells me to knit was it 73 stitches and knit them past the first set of the three stitches here on the left hand needle and work all the way around here to the first one you meet. Then you turn and pull back uh, to the first one, turn and knit back uh, to the second one, pull to the second, knit to the third, pull to the third, and then you're ready to move on uh, with the next uh, step in the pattern. So how to do short rows? If you have done them before, please use your preferred method. If not, uh, you can uh, look up a short video on how to do short rows. I use the German short rows. There are many different kinds. Uh, I don't recall the episode, but one of my episodes I have um, listed uh, the different kinds and you can see how they look different. Uh, however, when you do the short rows on this hat, uh, they will be hidden uh, behind this roll up edge. So if you're not an experienced uh, short row maker, don't worry at all. It will not be seen. Um, and if you are, yeah, as I said, just use your preferred method. So I will now knit uh, towards the first past the first uh, 
three to this one and let's meet up for the turn. I am now here at the first the one stitch before the first turn. So this is a center back. So if I would place uh, the hat like it should be, you can see the turn will be in the back um, to provide the shorter neck. So I just knit until I'm right here before uh, the stitch. I just turn the work so it's purl wise uh, in front of me and then I slip the first stitch on the right hand needle like this it looks like this then I pull pull the yarn so that you will see two legs you can see the two legs this is only one stitch but you see the two legs so you pull quite uh, tightly you don't knit anything, you just pull and then you knit the next stitch. So it looks like you have three stitches here after the stitch marker, but you only have one. So the next time you will pass this one and knit it, knit the two loops of the short row stitch together. And uh, this is how you go on. So um, I will just go a purl to the other uh, turn. Let's have a look at the turn from the purl side. So I have now uh, uh, purled my way back to the first stitch here on the left hand side of the center back. And uh, so I just knit the last one. I turn the work just like I did from the knit side. Then I um, have the yarn in front of the work, the working yarn. So I, I have it like this. Then I slip the needle with the yarn here on the finger of the front of the work. And then I pull, I pull again so that you will see the two legs of one stitch, just like on the purl side. And then I keep on knitting. So the, the, the short row stitch is not knitted. It is slipped and pulled quite tightly so that you won't uh, see it uh, in the finished work. So now I just keep on knitting and do it the same way uh, like I showed you on the right side and the wrong side. And uh, let's meet up when I meet the first short row here being on the right side. Um, on or the, yeah on the work I have now knitted my way back to RM1 so you see here the two legs it is one stitch so now I just knit the two legs together into one stitch and pull through and look you can hardly see that this is a turn and a short row that's a nice thing about it. Then you just slip the marker because you know you have been here. And the next time you know that you work just past this one. So now go to uh, the next stitch marker and do the turn uh, like we did. So we just turn the work, have the yarn in front of the work slip the stitch, pull so that you have the two legs and just pull your way back past the first a short row you make and uh, knit the two legs together and go on uh, to the next stitch marker. And then you can remove it and so on until you have done all three turns. So let's meet up when we have done all the turns. And I look at the pattern. So it was the last LMR. So now I need to knit to EOR. So I knit all the way around here uh, to the end of row. So when wearing the hat, it looks like this. So you have more here in the front. So I have now worked my way to end of row here. So by now we have done the short rows, finalized them and created the rolled up edge here on the front of the hat, this one. 
and uh, now the pattern tells us to make a round of decreases to decrease 16 no six stitches evenly in the round and uh, i have specified that for this this size it will be knit 13 and knit two together six times so i will uh, do this and then we will uh, meet up and uh, count uh, the number of rows and measure uh, where we are before we uh, continue i've made the decreases and i have 84 stitches on my needles so now it before we start the the pattern section the go pattern go nut section let's have a measurement of this uh, head uh, edge here the head base i call it so for me this is four centimeters and this is what is required so with this yarn and my gauge this is uh, eight rounds measured from center front we keep measuring from the center front now so if you have used your favorite yarn in of your area and you don't reach four centimeters just add a row more or what you need to get the four centimeters before you start the pattern section and uh, that's what is nice about not counting in rows but counting in centimeters and inches So we can now move to uh, page four uh, of the pattern and uh, and uh, consider uh, the headband, so this one. So there are uh, given more variations uh, in the pattern uh, so that you can choose one to go along uh, with the mittens. So there is the pearl stitches uh, like this one. I have this uh, knit one uh, pearl two uh, ribbing i've used on this this hat which is not felted yet um, and there is also some color work uh, here the only thing when doing this color work for the hat please make sure not to tighten too much because then it will kind of be tighter here and the band and squeeze your head this is not what you want so beware of the gauge and uh, knit loosely when doing color work you can do it without a band at all or you can just go nuts with the um, pattern of your own choice so let's move on i will uh, for this one again uh, choose the seed stitches so i go for a uh, variation number three uh, which I call the pearl stitches. It is uh, seed stitches. Um, so it tells me on round one, I would do knit one, pearl one, and in round two, pearl one, knit one, and just alternate and do uh, 16 rounds, which is seven centimeters and 2.8 inches. The pattern section is now done. This pattern go nuts, which I call the headband. And uh, I've made 16 rows of these seed stitches, so let me just have a, a check-in with the pattern to see if my measurements are okay. So this should be 7 centimeters. It is, and it's uh, the same as 2.8 inches. So now I'm ready to move on to the head tube section uh, of the pattern. Before we continue with the hat tube section, let's just have a look at this knitted hat to see where we are in the pattern. We are just above uh, the pattern go nut section and before we start the hat decreases. So it's this piece. Um, and this is the piece where you can personalize the fit of your hat. So let's say that you won't fit into the head height uh, given by, uh, by the pattern. This is the place where you do something about it. Don't ask me about the calculations uh, ending up where they did because it's rather complicated. But uh, for luck, it ended out to be quite simple when you look at it. So if you need a head being one centimeter higher 
than the one given in the pattern. It is just here you need one centimeter more. If you want it to be one centimeter less, you just take off, uh, knit uh, one centimeter uh, less here in this piece. That is how simple it is. So um, let's go look at the pattern, find your post-it note with your personalized measurements, and let's look at it uh, together in the pattern. So I will go back to page two with the measurements of my head. So my size is a small medium. So my crown length would be between 40 to 42. And it is for my earlobe to earlobe, I have 42 centimeters, giving me a head height divided by two, which gives me 21 centimeters. This is so fine. However, in this head, I would like to allow room for the hair clip. So I would like to make the head uh, one and a half centimeters longer than given in the pattern. And this is, of course, after felting. So this means that now in this piece, I just need 1.5 centimeters more than called for in the pattern. So let's go look in the pattern in section <clears throat> three head tube and here it says that I should now knit the head tube for uh, 17 centimeters measured from the center front of the head when it's not rolled up so it's here here to here should be 17 centimeters and as I want one and a half centimeters more this would be for me 18 and a half centimeters and the pattern also tells us how many rounds measured from uh, the edge of the pattern and it says here for me it's 13 rounds so it uh, with the gauge i have it would be around three more uh, rows so i should now knit 16 rows before i start the decreases so this is what i will do and then we will meet up uh, to do the decreases if you feel like wow uh, this was um, hard to to get please have a look in the tips and tricks section and i will give you examples of uh, the calculations for your uh, height of the head the head tube part is now done and i estimated that i needed uh, 16 rounds instead of the 13 called for in the pattern for my size so let me now check um, uh, the sizing uh, so this would be instead of 17 centimeters would be 18 and a half centimeters and i have to measure center front of the head uh, with the unrolled uh, edge so this is what i will do and let's see if i have 18 and a half centimeters i don't know if you can see it that clearly but it is so now I am ready to do the head decreases and soon this head will be uh, done and ready for felting. It's time to add in the stitch markers. So I have found the box here and let's just have a look in the pattern. So for my size here in the section four head crown decreases, I see that I need 14 stitches in between the stitch markers and I have six wedges, so 14 stitches, place marker, 14 stitches, place marker. The six stitch markers are now in place and we still have the marker for end of row here. So uh, before uh, we start doing the decreases on this work in progress, let me just show you how it looks in the final knitted hat so we have these six uh, wedges here so what we do is we knit one then we knit two stitches together knit until two stitches before the marker and then we do a slip slip knit slip the marker and do the same thing again six times before because we have uh, six wedges and let's have a look at the pattern uh, to see how the decreases are done. We are now on 
uh, page five of the pattern and we can see that the crown decreases are divided into three steps uh, the reason being the number of rounds between the decreases so in decrease step one we have uh, decreases on every fourth round in step two on every third round and step three on every second round and for my size being small medium i can see that in step one I need five repeats of round one to four uh, to start with. So let's go back to the work in progress and have a look at the decreases, how it's done. I have knitted the first stitch after the marker. So now I will just knit two stitches together. I will knit until I meet uh, the two last stitches before the next marker. And then I will do a slip slip knit. And how I do it is I, on the right hand side needle, I slip as is a, if I would knit it, but I don't knit it. And I put it back on the left hand side needle uh, like this, so that I can knit it uh, through the back loop. So this is knit two together and slip slip knit. Let's meet up when I have done all my five repeats of decrease step one. Um, yeah, so we can continue with step two. I am now ready for decrease step number two. I've done the five sets of decreases in the wedges and now there are only four stitches left in between the markers. But have a look, not much yarn left. So would you like to take a bet with me? Is this enough yarn to finish off the hat or do I need to rip back and settle with the hat uh, without room for the hair clip? So I can reduce by the one and a half centimeters here to get me more yarn. Let's see. Um, <laughs> in the pattern, decrease step two is only three rounds and I need to do knit two together and SSK and then knit two rounds and I will have two stitches left in between the stitch markers. Um, and this will uh, lead me directly to decrease step number four with knit two together. So in uh, it's not applicable with decrease step number three for my hat. So yeah, let's see. Another thing I uh, mentioned or forgot to mention uh, before starting the decreases, uh, the wire will be far too small uh, to knit all the way around and also almost too short uh, to do um, a magic loop technique. So what I do, uh, being lazy, not changing the wire, I just do not magic loop, but kind of in between. So I I pull all the wire and then knit, knit a piece and then I pull again and do it like this. And when I reach this step, uh, I have enough uh, wire to do a magic loop. Yeah, but I will do the final decreases and hopefully make it. <laughs> Phew, I made it. And I even have <laughs> this much left, so that's nice. So now I will uh, bind off uh, with this crochet hook and just pull the yarn through uh, the loops. And uh, yeah, then I can be ready to start the felting. But let's, when I have just done this, let's see how much yarn I actually used because maybe you recall that I started on a, a new bullet skein and then I had some uh, leftover yarn from one of the other hats. So we'll just have a look. Oi! Whoopsie! Yeah. Like this. And uh, the last point on the agenda is to weave in the ends. So I just pull the yarn through the same stitches here on the outside and on the inside with a darning needle and then we can um, weave in in the back side here and just cut the yarn. 
I have found the, the labels here. So I used one full bullet gain and I had 23 grams of this one. So one and a half bullet gain to make a size uh, small medium hat, uh, however longer than the pattern calls for. So here it is and it will turn out like this. So if you think, well, yeah, almost because it will be a little longer. So if you think, well, this looks kind of, of weird with this uh, top here, it will be nice and round when felted and even out. It is now very dark outside. I had to make a break to attend a dancing class. I just love uh, dancing and I try to get some exercise every day with a higher intensity uh, than knitting because, yeah, you know, as a hobby or, or even a full-time job here, this is uh, a rather sedentary um, yeah, hobby. So we need the exercise, right? But back to the hats. So I will start felting these hats. But before I do, I will take the measurements noted on a piece of paper so I can follow uh, the felting process and also check in with the pattern to see if I am still on track. I should be because I have measured along the way. But just, yeah, you know, I always do the final measurements. So uh, let's first do the circumference of the hat. And where do I measure uh, the circumference? I measure it above the rolled up uh, edge here so i will just take the diameter of the hat and multiply by two so this is uh, 28 times two it is 56 centimeters and uh, this is exactly the measurement here before felting <coughs> sorry uh, so this is fine and then i will take the measurement of the length of the hat and I take the measurement with where I roll down this uh, edge. And uh, as I increase the length by uh, one and a half centimeter, let's look at the pattern, then it should be 27 plus one and a half, so 28 and a half centimeters. And yeah, I'm looking down here. This is exactly what it is. So all good, all good now. And this head is ready. And I have taken the measurements of this one, which is a size small. So, um, yeah. Felting. Let's talk about felting. Uh, because I have now managed to get reproducibility out of these uh, two uh, different yarns and they behave very differently uh, when felting. So this yarn, the Fritis Garn from Sandness, takes longer time to felt. So I will felt this uh, for one and a half hours in the washing machine. Uh, I will use uh, 30 milliliters of green soap, a towel and um, 40 degrees centigrade. I just learned from you lovely viewers that uh, not all washing machines can be set at a specific temperature. Uh, so uh, we can here in Denmark, in EU, I guess. So I set it for 40 degrees centigrade, which is approximately 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And I guess that would be equivalent to a um, warm cycle, not hot cycle. And um, yeah. And, and this program should not have a pre-wash. So without the pre-wash and don't use uh, softeners or any uh, wool uh, soap with uh, enzymes or bleaches. So just a, a common wool soap. Um, so one and a half hours. This one made from drops in Nepal uh, fills very easily. So I will apply only half an hour for this hat. Uh, and still the other uh, parameters the same, uh, except for the soap. I have divided the volume of the soap in half because the cycle is so much um, uh, shorter and with less water. So only 15 milliliters of soap for this one. Yeah, I have summed up all the parameters here because 
even my ears uh, they bo 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 when <laughs> all these numbers come up then yeah okay so you can see it in a poster and um yeah let me start the felting i'm very curious to see how they turn out and if and hopefully like i have expected It is now quite late in the evening and I've just taken out these hats from the washing machine. So after the spin cycle, they are still a bit uh, damp. Uh, but let's have a look at, uh, at the results, both how they look and the measurements. So first the measurements and uh, check in with the pattern. This hat in Drops Nepal is meant to be a size X small. And uh, I have done the measurements already, and I can tell you that they are spot on with the circumference and the height of the head. And when I measure the height of the head after the felting, it is with a rolled up edge. So it's from here to here. Whereas when we knit it, it was the rolled down edge here. So, and I won't try it on because then I would block it to the size of my head. So I will just now leave this flat to dry and gift it to one uh, with a smaller head. So let's have a look at this one. Uh, this I knitted uh, during this video to be a size uh, small medium and with a bit of uh, higher than the one I'm wearing to allow for the hairpin. So let's have a look on these measurements. So I'll just take off this hat and compare. This one is in the front is the the old one I've been wearing and this one is the new one so maybe it's hard to see <laughs> I've just moved my fingers see here um, exactly one and a half centimeters so that was very nice uh, seeing that then for the circumference I have done the measurements and it is actually um, almost one centimeter wider than the pattern says so let's try it on and see if it is okay yes i'm happy it's down just uh, below my earlobes and it allows for the hairpin and actually sits very nicely and when it is dried up it will have the exact same elasticity it already is quite fine so yeah I'm really happy with this one, so now I can gift away this other one uh, to people not wearing hairpins. So I will again uh, take this off and uh, leave it flat to dry. I can put on this one again. Now I am getting custom to the warmth around my ears. Just a small detail. Maybe you have noticed this tail end on the hat I've been wearing during the whole episode. I left it here for you to see that after felting, if you don't weave it in, it would just be like this. And then I thought, well, we can cut this off together and have a look at the felted hat with the weaved in end and see the difference. So now I will take uh, the scissors and just do it. Ta -da. <laughs> there you go. Here, look. I guess you can hardly see where it is. Now I can't see where I weaved in the end. And this one, I weaved in the end. So I guess Maybe I'm not that good at weaving and you have to be close up to see it, but here it is. I Maybe I have woven in the end around these stitches, so maybe spoiling the plus one here. I should have done it on the back side. You can see it a bit, so it was just to tell you, you can be lazy, not uh, weave in the ends and it will not be seen at all when you cut off the ends once it has been felted. 
So I guess that's what I will do uh, from now on. Let's look at uh, closer at the surface of the head. So this is the drop snippel. And uh, just like the mittens, I, I would call it kind of like, maybe it looks bookly like, I, I no, not really, but, but you can still see the stitch definition and it is uh, rather uh, flexible, uh, this hat uh, still. So the other one being the Sandness Fritis Garn, it feels a bit thicker and uh, a bit more dense, a bit less flexible, but still not, you know, stiff, stiff, uh, like uh, maybe the slippers. Um, and it, it is a bit more uh, fluffy. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm very happy and uh, that I could uh, gain this uh, reproducibility of the pattern and, and doing these mittens with, with the variables of my process. So, yeah, so now I just need to make a matchy matchy pair of mittens for this hat. The other ones I have matched up already, so good to go. Uh, maybe I should add that I made these mittens in in uh, Drops Alaska and they are uh, quite dense and nice and warm for mittens. However, I think for a felted hat it would be uh, too stiff with Alaska. So I would not recommend this kind of yarn. I have got an idea for a new hat with a nice, uh, um, it's a brim. I guess you would call it. Um, so, uh, but this is yet a totally different kind of hat and, and maybe, uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of inspired by the royal family and our new king and these very elegant hats. So I have one in my mind. So maybe I will uh, design uh, such a hat, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe coming up. But let's stay with this one and uh, I really hope you will enjoy it. Please download for free and share uh, your nice projects. It would be nice to see all these lovely hats and mittens out there. So yeah, I guess we've reached the end of the episode. So have a nice uh, time, have fun and see you in the next episode. Raja Noah from Inge's Knitting Lab. Bye bye.